We're going to be crunching some serious numbers Import today. Import the file into Google Sheets. All right. How do I do that? In order to crunch those numbers, I'm going to have to be an absolute genius on Excel. Copy to Excel. What do I just... That? Fortunately, I'm up to the task. I am in excruciating mental pain. I'm an expert. I'm a savant. I'm any word that you want. All we need to do is hit a... Uh, brain blast. Shut up. Shut up. What the flop? Hey, what's up? Welcome to another video. My name is Zealand. Hopefully you realize that because that's the name of the YouTube channel, but apparently some people actually don't think my name is actually Zealand. It is. I would show you documents to prove it if you people wouldn't steal them and do weird things with them. This is why we hate the internet. Anyways, we're talking about Football Manager today, and I'm actually filming this video live on stream. If you want to see me do fun things like that, my Twitch is down in the description. Even if you can't catch that, I have a live channel, which is one of the featured channels that you can check out as well. We're doing a really exciting experiment today where we're talking about Football Manager Strikers in particular, and which attributes by themselves are the best for your striker. So not paired with anything else, but just one attribute to stand above them all on strikers. Spoiler, it's not finishing. Gasp, gasp, gasp. Couple more things that the Twitch chat wanted me to promote though. One, there is a shirtless picture of me on my Instagram. So that is also down in the description. I'm sorry, mom. So now for the plan that we laid out for ourselves. If you watched the previous video when I was talking about just attributes, which I did pretty poorly. I only simulated it five times. I did league position instead of total points. I didn't have goal difference. Don't worry now, we've got 10 league simulations. We also included not just a column for points, we also included a column for goal difference. So we've got more data points and more samples to go off of. And I think we're just getting smarter. I don't know what to tell you. The way we laid this out is we took every single attribute and huge thank you to my friend, I'm Satan Jr. for setting this up. It's a fantastic database editor under the uh, FM editors group and he's put this together where we have every attribute i forgot to pull it up before i started talking i figured it out now we're fine now every attribute represented and on the teams if you click on say acceleration fc you go to the senior squad you sort by positions you pull up the strikers and my boy Gianfranco franco he has 20 acceleration and 10 everything else. While everybody else on the team, say the midfielders, say the defenders, they have 10s at everything. So the only differences we have are on the strikers. Now here's the second important part of this test. The tactics these teams are all going to use are going to be the same because the managers are the same. So let's fast forward to the end of one of the simulations. We did 10. So here is our season 10 simulation. Obviously strength did very well. We'll talk about that more later. We go into tactics and you see that there is a 5-3-2 being played. And most importantly, there are two strikers on the field. We've got one that's more advanced and one that hangs further back. So you have the opportunity, hopefully for every type of attribute that would be influencing what these strikers are doing from various positions and various roles that they might be given, the deeper and more forward ones, then we're getting a balanced representation of that. And just to show you I'm not crazy, we'll just pick another random team and show you that they're actually playing a different formation and I'm apparently really stupid. Damn it! Why are they playing a 4-4-2, man? We looked at like four teams and they were all playing a 5-3-2 last time. What is going on right now? So upon further investigation, apparently one team decided throughout the course of the season to switch to a 4-4-2, but I swear to you, every other team is in a 5-3-2. The key was what we wanted was a two-striker formation. And that's what we've gotten is a two-striker formation with people playing uh, in different roles and typically out of a 5-3-2. A but you got to remember that the attributes of every other player are all the exact same. The strikers are the only thing that make a difference at all. And one last important note, I want your attention. I want your somber attention because this is going to dictate the debate that happens in the comments down below. And that is the takeaway from this is not what attributes are good and what attributes aren't. 
every attribute is good in certain situations. The takeaway from this video is which attribute among all the others can single-handedly make your striker good. On the other side of that, which attributes can't single-handedly make your striker good? They need help. They need other attributes and they combine to make your striker very good, but they don't necessarily carry that striker. Some attributes can carry, some can't. So now it's time to actually run the 10 league simulations, which means I have some uh, time to kill. It's my Bate save. Pull up a picture of Miles. I don't think this is accurate anymore. Bermuda! I think my cheeks have gotten fat. Oh, simulation's done. Okay, now that we've finished the simulation and I've gone through with all of Twitch chat watching me, putting the attributes together and stacking them and putting them in a table, I have the top 10 for you and I will give you their overall point totals. We are going to start with number 10. Number 10! It's passing, which won the other attributes league, so this is interesting. Number nine. Ladies and gentlemen, coming in with a score of 503 points over 10 seasons, Vision. Okay, we're not gonna do that for everyone. The way it was set up, you played each attribute once throughout the course of the season. So 35 games, the average, you can figure out the average. I should be able to do that on Excel though. Just divide it by 10, 50.3 points a season on 35 games. So it's solid performance from Vision. And then you just move the decibel place one to the left. And then all of a sudden you've got your average. It's so easy. Number eight is composure. I gotta be honest. I think I saw that one coming, but good for composure. Finished on 510 points. So an average of 51. Number seven. Acceleration. You knew the physicals were gonna do pretty well and acceleration came on 512 points of an average of 51.2 points per season. And that's just a darn good performance, but it did fluctuate a lot. Acceleration actually finished 34 points uh, in one season, which is obviously way below its average. Acceleration also managed to win one of the 10 simulations. So there was a little more fluctuation in there. And I gotta be honest, I don't have a degree in this. I have no idea what to take from that, but uh, there's the average. Number six. Good for me because I always value this one is technique with an average of 51.8 points per season, 518 points over the course of our 10 simulations. And right next to it, number five was work rate with 519 points over the course of our 10 simulations. So right next to each other, virtually inseparable. Number four, which is off the ball. And this was 520 points. So you had 518, 519, 520 points are an average of 52 points per season for off the ball, which is honestly, we're gonna talk more about that later. That's seriously impressive though, because it's actually top four off the ball, but the top three created a significant amount of separation. Number three is dribbling at 532 and an average of 53.2 points per season. Just 20 dribbling and nothing else. They like to, I'm not even making that joke, Reese. I'm not, they like to move it, move it. I'm not, I'm not dancing. I refuse to dance. The rhythm is dead. Number two. Number two, which a lot of the chat guessed is heading at 545 points, 54 and a half points per season. But number one, and I know you're racking your brain. You're like, well, this has got to be the most important attribute for strikers. That's the whole point of this video. It's probably not what you think. Number one. Number one is strength, obviously. Number one was strength by a mile. Strength won the majority of our simulations. Strength came in at 645 points. A clean, cool, exactly 100 points more than anybody, I say it like they're real people, more than any other attribute, 64 and a half points per season. That's an average throughout the entirety of the simulation of almost two points 
per match the whole time for strength. Nobody was even near that. Nobody was in the ballpark. It's like Akin Fenwa everywhere all the time. He's just everywhere. At least all the strikers, except they actually had much higher pace. That's not important though. It's the same idea, same kind of, you know, build. And we're going to dig into why this is important and what takeaways we should get from it. But we're going to release the bottom five first because it's just really funny to dump on. It's just really funny to dump on the bottom five teams. It is. Coming in at fifth worst is finishing. I know what you're thinking and how incredibly off the wall that sounds, but I have a perfectly reasonable explanation why finishing by itself is down here. We will get to it in a second. Fourth worst, much more unsurprisingly, is corners, obviously. Finishing finished on... <laughs> actually finished in a tie with Flair at 433, but including finishing in the bottom five is a necessity, but Flair is there too, so. Uh, then corners was on 430. Number three worst was leadership on 428, and the bottom two was very clear. Long shots at 417, 417 points through 10 simulations and tackling at 416 through 10 simulations. Those were clearly the two worst. Those are the numbers. The full table is going to be linked down in the description. I've literally made a Google sheet and have shared the link to you. So it's down in the description. You can click on it and link at the, look at the full table and switch over to goal difference, which is on the first sheet if you wanna see the goal difference breakdown from the 10 simulations. What are our takeaways now? The first takeaway is that when it comes to all of the physical attributes, you would have figured pace was more important. I personally would have figured balance was more important. Those did not make an appearance in the top 10, but strength did. And this actually explains a lot about one particular player from my past. It's Dennis Kozlov from my old Bate save, a guy who ended up being the best product that my Belarusian Academy was able to produce. He was tremendous, even though his technicals and mentals weren't quite as good as the people around him, his strength was 19. And so having that high of strength can just carry you, even though it is important to remember it's rare and you can't just hunt out people that have 18, 19, 20 strength in order to carry your team. If you see somebody with a lot of strength, they don't necessarily need attributes elsewhere to be successful. They can't have ones everywhere, but you know, they don't have to be as high as everybody else around them because the strength will make up for it. They can just hold positions and create positions other people can't. On the opposite end of the spectrum where strength just came out of the rafters to put up a plus 204 goal difference and the next highest one was dribbling on 76 over the course of the 10 simulations, that's insane, was finishing. Finishing which had a goal difference of minus 37 throughout the course of the 10 simulations, finished tied in the bottom five and was just objectively bad. And so those types of strikers that you and I and everybody else find where you go, oh, well, he's not particularly fast. Oh, he's not able to pass the ball. He's not a good dribbler. His touch isn't that good. But look at this shiny finishing. Don't do it. That's the temptation of Satan. Don't do it. Those guys are not the savior. They need other attributes in order to be successful. Finishing is not the main attraction. It's like the cherry on top of the sundae that takes a good player and makes him a great player. It doesn't take a bad player and make him a good player. And what we can take largely from the fact that finishing is a cherry on top while strength and things like it dribbling off the ball, which are like it, give me a second, are the real meat of the sandwich. Excuse me if you're a vegetarian. Good for you. I can't give up bacon, obviously. The ability to create shots is much more important than your ability to be precise in finishing them. Just look at Raheem Sterling. I feel like that's mean. <laughs> it's true, but it's mean. So in Football Manager, if you get less shots, but you're more precise, you're less effective than dribbling 
than strength and these attributes that can help you create as many shots as possible, at least in isolation. You would rather have 20 strength and 20 finishing because that would obviously make you a lot better. But if you have to choose one of the two, choose the guy that can create shots rather than the guy that can just finish them. This is like the anti-poacher experience here. And in particular, the fact that off the ball was so effective. It finished third on the goal difference table with a plus 73, one of only three attributes to clear 70. The fact that off the ball was so impactful without athleticism. I mean, 10 acceleration, agility, balance, and pace, and 20 off the ball, they're still able to create a lot of separation. I always figured off the ball was a cherry on top of a physical Sunday, and I'm just gonna abuse the same metaphor. And obviously the people they're competing against have the same speed. What the case appears to be is that off the ball is almost this bonus athleticism because of the wily ability to create space. You don't need athleticism to use off the ball. You don't need an athleticism advantage for off the ball to take hold and it can just compensate even if you're not fast and the center back is fast that off the ball is still going to make you dangerous now it would obviously be interesting to isolate the test and see at what level of physical or speed dominance is a defensive player able to nullify an off the ball player's potential but off the ball is absolutely lethal and dribbling without an athleticism advantage, without a creativity advantage. Just the ability to keep the ball close to your feet while you're running makes you dangerous. And the ability to create shots is just more important than the ability to finish them. A couple of other important takeaways that I have just been waiting to hammer out. Work rate is so much better than determination, okay? And determination is fantastic off the field, but now we've done two attributes leagues and we see determination in 24th position and work rate in fifth. Work rate literally top five, determination 24th. We saw it in the attributes league with everybody and we see it now with the striker experiment too, that work rate is in the match and determination is really just primarily outside of the match, training and interactions with the player and the player's interactions between each other. Just big takeaway, I feel like I should make a whole video on that later. Another thing to isolate is obviously finishing was terrible. You know what wasn't terrible and was actually in the top 10? Composure, composure is in the top 10. So while finishing is not something that can carry by itself with a good sample size here, composure is. So just being a composed player in those situations and being able to make the right decisions in those situations and not feel the pressure of those situations makes you a better finisher than your actual ability to strike the ball, which kind of makes sense when you think about it in real life, but it's still an interesting takeaway. And it means that the amount of pressure that is put on players in finishing situations is very high, which means if you have somebody that does not have good composure, you should just teach them to hit the ball with pace as a player trait so that they don't have to think. See goal, hit towards goal use their natural finishing. And the final huge takeaway from this video is that somehow, some way, long throw cheese has stayed relevant. One of the 10 simulations was indeed won by long throws, despite the fact that long throws ended up finishing 30th out of 36 attributes. Long live the long throw. So I was gonna end the video there, but somebody in the chat, Tio, just brought up a very interesting point. They signed a striker that's got a lot of high attributes, We're talking like 16 first touch, dribbling, finishing, composure, you know, everything, five strength. This does not mean that that player is bad. Strength is just the best attribute to be able to individually carry. We have not done a test on which attributes you can't live without. I wanna do that test. It will happen in the future. It's not happened yet. So that player is not necessarily bad because those combinations of attributes, high composure and high finishing, being able to take the pressure and strike the ball well and dribble well so you can create space to get shots off. Dribbling was one of the top attributes here. First touch did very well. I think it finished 17th right uh, uh, top half of the table by one team. That's it. If I hope you enjoyed the test, you got any ideas for other tests, I'm planning on doing this for every position at some point. Obviously, if those positions are tweaked in FM21, we will redo those tests as we get better and better at doing them themselves. Did I word that right? Who knows? We'll see you on stream.